Hi, I'm Rob. Um, this is a presentation about eBean ORM. Uh, so eBean doesn't have an entity manager or or any equivalent of, so unit of work or session. So the question posed here is, is how does eBean work without having one of those? And uh, we're looking to answer that. So in doing so, we'll, we'll look at the JPA entity manager and we'll look at the four main parts here. Uh, the L1 cache, which is known as the persistence context. We'll look at lazy loading uh, via the load context. Uh, we'll look at flush. Uh, so underneath flush is a JDBC batch buffer. And we'll also look at the dirty state. So in terms of eBean, uh, with the L1 cache, uh, by default it's scoped to the transaction. So in terms of JPA, if you're using uh, transaction scope to persistence context, then this is effectively the same. eBean does provide some extra scopes, so there's a, a query scope. Um, you'd use this if you want to bypass the, the L1 cache in, a, in, a, in the middle of a transaction. Um, and there's also a per object graph scope, and that's used to support very large queries. So for example, if you're doing a bulk um, elastic search update, you're doing a query pulling back you know, thousands of uh, uh, object graphs, converting them into JSON, sending that to elastic search, uh, that would be a typical use case for a large query. Um, you don't want to use find list there because that would blow out your memory. So I ignoring those extra scopes that eBean provides, uh, there's not much difference. Effectively we have an L1 cache and that's scoped to the transaction. So now let's have a look at uh, lazy loading. Uh, with eBean, the entity beans reference their load context and eBean does allow lazy loading beyond the original scope. So this is a subject in itself, but the, the short there is, and the short answer, is that from a database perspective, yeah, this is fine. Uh, we're running at read committed isolation level. And from an ORM perspective, eBean enables this by having a reference back to the persistence context so we can continue our lazy loading building a, a consistent object graph. So yeah this works like Eclipse Link um, but not like Hibernate so if you're familiar with those um, and there's no lazy initialization exception. Uh, the difference here between eBean and JPA will depend on which JPA provider you're comparing to so again we're, we're like Eclipse Link and not like Hibernate. So now let's have a look at flush um, and so we're looking at the JDBC batch buffer that sits underneath that. So for eBean the JDBC batch buffer is on the transaction so with Entity, um, Entity Manager you've got flush and you've got flush modes and you'll find those on uh, eBean's transaction. We also have some other methods for controlling the batch processing on the transaction. So, for example, you can turn off gen get generated keys uh, if you're doing lots of inserts and you don't need the IDs, for example. You can control the batch size. The batch mode is you know, a global default, but you can also configure it per transaction. Um, and the last one there, in terms of persist cascade, you can turn that off when you want complete control. So. Um, then you can walk the object graph yourself and control exactly what's persisted. So, in short, flush, flush <laughs> and batch control is on the transaction. Uh, so, so there's some caveats here. Uh, JPA flush can potentially uh, merge statements and reorder statements. Uh, and eBean is unlikely to adopt these features. Uh, we don't see the, the performance gains and you know there's, there's a big downside of deadlock potential there so no we don't think those are good ideas and we don't do those. So now let's have a look at dirty state. In terms of eBean the entity beans hold their own dirty state so uh, what this means is that they don't need to be attached to anything to persist them uh, and they can be persisted independently so if you've got some beans that are uh, in a state that can be persisted and some that are not, you can just persist what you want. Uh, this mechanism also enables stateless updates, which are an update without doing a fetch. So you can, you can new up an object, you can set its ID, set some properties and say update. 
So uh, a typical use case here is that uh, you have a rest endpoint. Uh, you get some JSON, marshal it into an object graph. It doesn't have to be just a bean. It can be you know, like an order with m many details. And then you can say update. So there's no need to be attached um, to, to a context in order to save. So uh, that's the main factor here where the beans hold their own duty state. So as a summary with eBean, uh, the L1 cache is on the transaction. Uh, in terms of lazy loading, we do allow lazy loading beyond the initial scope, uh, like Eclipse Link. Um, in terms of flush, uh, those the flush and the control of batch processing uh, in terms of persisting is on the transaction. And our dirty state is held on the entity beans themselves. So we're coming back to our original question. Uh, eBean has no entity manager. Yep. Uh, how does it do it? Basically, it comes down to that. The location of our dirty state is on the entity beans. And in terms of the JDBC batch buffer and the persistence context, they are on the transaction. So uh, this also works with external transaction uh, managers, so JTA and Spring, for example. So the question here, why pursue this uh, sessionless ORM approach? Uh, the first major point is simplicity. We now only have to manage transactions. There's no entity manager to manage. Uh, we end up with save and delete. So it's very easy to use and understand. And we get control over what's persisted. So there's not some big context that we're trying to flush. We get a lot more control over exactly what's persisted and the order in which things occur. And we get the simplicity without a performance penalty. Um, we can do uh, as, as good with JDBC batches as, as JPA. So that's the end. Um, hopefully that was an enjoyable presentation. Cheers. I'll try and stop this now. <laughs>